uh, to teach the things that we uh, say the International Baccalaureate Program, mm -hmm. the Mandarin Chinese, uh, and these programs are put in place so that students will be able to compete in the global economy. Uh, without the Chinese, I think we, and other languages, we are going to be lost and our children will not be able to compete because right now they are going abroad to work. The programs, there are several different programs. We are, with our reading program, say for instance, we're making certain that the reading program, uh, we're doing things with that, with Dr. Oladele to make certain that all children are reading on grade level. And if they are not reading on grade level, say in 2008, and the program is in place and we have the teachers the highly qualified teachers, uh, then by 2009, we are seeing an improvement in scores as we did from 2007 to 2008. My next question I posed to Dr. Melvin. I basically asked him what his role is as community superintendent, where he's from because he's not a Buffalonian, and has he basically experienced a program like this renovation program and its magnitude? Well, our major role Tracy is to supervise principals. And we also look at monitoring instruction on a daily basis in those schools. We supervise a various amount of schools. Myself, I have, I'm responsible for 22 schools. Mm -hmm. So I'm around about town all the time. Also, we meet with parents, and uh, parents call the office, and we also meet with the parents in uh, the school building. Uh, we also help build principal leadership skills. Uh, we continue to work with principals on a, month, principals on a monthly basis, and uh, we teach them skills to build their capacity. Matter of fact, uh, this program <laughs> in Buffalo is large scale, yes. and it's very impressive. Mm -hmm. You can look at some of the schools that have been completed now, Hutch Tech, mm -hmm. one of them, beautiful school, Bennett, as well as East. I'm very impressed with it. The parents and the teachers and the students should also be very impressed. Mm -hmm. Those schools are a fantastic place to be. Now we know why it's so important to have those community superintendents. I also wanted to talk about the link between top-notch school facilities and student performance. I know there's a direct correlation between student uh, achievement and being in a school that has been renovated. Because Hutch Tech, I was very impressed with it when I went on a tour there, uh, went to basketball games there. They, students, the teachers, everyone was very enthusiastic. And another school, just to bring in an elementary school, School 37, Futures Academy, Dr. Stevenson is the principal there. And I had gone to School 37 prior to renovation. Mm -hmm. I went to School 37 after renovation, and the building was beautiful. Everyone was enthusiastic, the teachers were on board, they wanted to make certain that the flowers that were planted outside were all kept up and it was, it just makes a big difference because children don't want to be in a dungeon trying to learn. They want the atmosphere there, they want all of the uh, instruments and tools that are necessary and in these schools you have state-of-the-art equipment and that means an awful lot. And we didn't have that prior to our beginning the renovation project. Mm -hmm. I saw that in suburban schools, but I didn't see it in our schools. And now to go to our schools that have been renovated, I walk the halls and it's just wonderful. Now, and us talking about the new facilities and high tech, we also wanted to talk about or learn more about the Promethean Active Whiteboards. So I pose these questions to Dr. Melvin because he is the overseer of all the whiteboards being installed in all of the schools. Tracy, 850 boards were uh, installed in 16 schools over the summer. And those boards were placed in schools that were in the phase one and phase two uh, joint construction project. Uh, where we are in training, uh, the teachers have been training this month. Mm -hmm. Also, we have three sessions scheduled during the school year. Uh, we're very impressed. The, uh, the surveys have shown that the teachers are excited about using the boards. 
uh, the students have been excited, and I think it's just going to open up the world to the students. Well, it's obvious that these whiteboards are a critical component in the Buffalo schools. Now, I also wanted to talk about phase three and phase four, looking forward. I wanted to find out what their colleagues were saying about the project. Well, my colleagues are very enthusiastic about it because we have seen uh, the escalation of scores in those schools that have been renovated. And we know, as I said before, that there's a direct correlation uh, between having an environment that students want to be in mm -hmm. and have access to different facilities within that school. So our student achievement, we w are going to be successful. The scores are going to go up. And uh, my colleagues are excited about it. That's great. And it's like we just need, we want to be able to do more than we're doing. Well, I just have to kind of echo uh, President Kapsiak mm -hmm. that the, when the research has shown that when schools are clean and bright, it really improves the school environment. Mm -hmm. And I think that the community is very uh, ready for new buildings. For example, we have a new building that's in the phase three. Mm -hmm. um, renovation concept with City Honors as well as uh, several other schools. So we are very impressed with that and we're waiting. I, I know that uh, it takes a couple of years, but I think parents and the community are very patient with, with uh, the process. Now I believe parent participation is crucial to a student's success. Being a parent myself of two children in the Buffalo Public School System, I asked Ruth and Joe what their advice is to parents to help their children succeed. Parents really need to come to school and, and check on their students and their children, as well as meeting with the teachers. It should be ongoing. It should not just be once or twice every, uh, every year. Mm -hmm. uh, call the teacher. Ask for the teacher's email address. And uh, I think that uh, that's a good way mm -hmm. for parents to stay involved. Okay. And even if they don't have email, I, I go back to when my uh, son was in uh, seventh grade and w he went to a new school. Well, at that time I had email. They didn't have the uh, technology in the schools as they do today for the teachers. And now today uh, they all have access to email. We did, as I said, the black and white composition book. Yeah. You know, on a daily basis, I knew what he did in school. Mm -hmm. And the teacher wrote and I wrote. And when children know that as a parent that you're involved in their education, then they are more likely to succeed. And we just reach out to the parents. We have the district parent coordinating council that meet uh, I think every other week, and uh, other activities, we have one coming up October 18th, okay. the parental involvement piece, and that is so key. I just went to a conference and I brought back a stack of information on parental involvement. I know we do a lot with our parents, but if there is information out there, I'm going to grab it and bring that's it right. back. That's right. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Making It Happen, my favorite interview show. Look for a new episode starting in January. Also starting new, we're asking you to send in your questions, comments, and suggestions to mih at lpsiminelli.com. And what I'll do is I will read and answer your questions during our next show. So please keep those comments and, and questions and suggestions coming. Don't forget, we're on YouTube. Go to youtube.com, type in LP Simonelli, and you'll be able to view all of our past and present shows. So don't forget, comments, questions, and suggestions should be sent to mih at lpsimonelli.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Tracy Cardwell from LP Simonelli, and until next time, let's keep making it happen.